Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. If some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So, let's see. Last place we left off. Oh yeah, we were having a nice little drink with Vool. Getting to know him better, having him poke fun at us. You know. <laughs> you know how these things go. But anyway guys, sit back and let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes. And let's jump right into it. <clears throat> Alright, Alarm Chain, you are up. Let's do it! Okay. <clears throat> I know, but they pair well with the beer. And it's plenty enough for me. I smile, taking an idle sip. Fair play. He shrugs, flicking up the remaining piece of sausage and swallowing it with a loud chomp. Anyway, when a female goes into labor, she's brought to the well. Once a pup is born, one of the pebbles reveals itself as a moonstone. Have two females going to labor at the same time, well, you can guess the rest. That sounds... magical. I smile, genuinely amazed by the concept. It sounds so simple and in tune with nature. Their traditions, even if odd, do have a certain allure to them. I guess so. I'm sure there is some trick involved. There's always a trick in religion. He scoffs in annoyance. I wouldn't place much stock in the coincidence of being born at the same time as another pup. That's just sappy nonsense. You... you don't believe in it? It's almost amusing how polar opposites those two wolves are, with Rannick screaming fate at everything he sees while Vol sniffing some sort of deceit everywhere he looks. I might not believe in the supernatural aspect of my bond with Rannick, but I've heard but I've heard enough about the circumstances of my birth to concede a simple fact. We are Moon Brothers. The rest is fluff. Oh? I issue an involun I issue involuntarily, expecting a follow up, but the wolf does not respond. Instead, Vool simply takes another long swig at his tankard, emptying it in one go. Once he bangs it back on the table, he looks at me with confusion. What? What were the circumstances of your birth? Ugh. He rolls his eyes in annoyance. I guess he didn't mean to mention it. We can have another. I propose, to which he only gives me a telling gaze. How can you have another if you haven't even finished your first one? He knows I'm fishing for detail, but how can he blame me? Please, you can't leave me hanging like this! Try me. He scoffs, standing up. Fuck, I'm losing him! Okay, I didn't want to do this, but you kind of owe me for that choking. I owe you, you say? He laughs mockingly. Press your luck further, piglet, and you'll earn another scar. I watch as he approaches the door, and I fidget with my fingers in panic. At this point, I don't know if it's about the story itself or the fear of being left alone. Moonshine! I shout out as, I shout out as his paw hand, lands on the door handle. I'm surprised by the words that came out of my mouth. We can have some moonshine! Hmm. He croons, narrowing his eyes and looking back at me. That desperate, huh? The black wolf snickers, approaching the cupboard in a sigh, and I sigh internally. Very well. He walks toward the cupboard and retrieves the familiar clay bottle. I watch as he removes the cork with his teeth, causing a loud pop. Here! Earn it. He passes me the bottle and I swallow heavily, feeling the boozy smell hit me once again. This is not going to be pleasant, but I had better put my money where my mouth is. I reluctantly grab the bottle, remembering his initial, his initial tip. I tilt my head back and allow a large gulp to slush straight into the back of my throat, swallowing deeply. Hmm. He mutters in amusement, seeing as I manage to stomach two long swigs. Not bad for a suckling. He guzzles down nearly twice as much as I did and passes me the bottle again. It takes all my willpower not to wince, as I force myself to take another gulp. Once I put, once I put the bottle down on the table, I quickly stuff my mouth with a piece of sausage. Well then? Why are you so insistent? He reaches for the bottle and takes another swig. I just want to get to know you. There's nothing worse than a needy drinking, buddy. The bottle slides across the boards, the boards towards me. Especially if they cannot keep up. Yo, Orion's gonna be drunk as fuck after this. I narrow my brows defiantly, taking a long gulp of the booze. I'm not really paying it any mind at this point. It stopped burning as it used to. I bang the bottle on the table and look at him angrily. I can keep up. Don't worry. I look at him expectantly, to which he simply shrugs. I didn't agree to anything, did I? Oh, come on! Not fair! 
Life ain't fair, Piglet. Better get used to it. Come on, fool. Don't be like that. Ugh, Versa's right. You talk too much. Especially for someone with a death penalty over their head. The tribe already knows I'm here. Yeah, would be a shame if they found out you can speak as well. He nods towards the open windows. Oh, shit. <laughs> Vol chuckles, watching me scramble to close them one by one. Relax, Piglet. It was just a joke. No one would dare to eavesdrop on us while I'm here. Not even how? I stop my frantic efforts, looking at him with worry. Especially not how. He ain't the bravest pup in the pack, in the, and in this tribe, everyone knows to stay the fuck away from me. Maybe in time I can teach you that as well. Mighty curious how, for a prey skin, you seem to have very little survival instincts. I roll my eyes, slightly annoyed he caused my heart to pound like a drum. Thanks, I really needed a good scare. I mumble, returning to my seat. Ha! Huh, it wasn't a scare, Piglet. You're as clueless as an actual livestock. If anyone, or if anyone around finds out that you're ready for the knife, it's off to the chopping block. Again, I roll my eyes, this time at his apt analogy. Thanks. Noted. Simple, keep the windows closed when talking with Rannick would suffice. You should cut the talking to a minimum. Really. This cottage became a talking point, and there will be plenty of noses sniffing about. Anyway, time for me to go. He stands up and takes a final gulp from the clay bottle. Stayed here long enough as it is. Why? Afraid other wolves will think you're enjoying the company of another kitten? I grumble, thinking it was just a jab at me. As if I care what others think. I simply can see you've got your hands full. He looks around the clean house. Rennick's dirty laundry won't clean itself. You dick. Besides, you're all out of booze. He tips the bottle over and let it roll towards the edge of the table, forcing me to rush in to catch it before it crashes against the floor. Nice one. He winks at me in approval as he pulls on the front as he pulls on the front door. Verissa should be with you in a bit. Try not to get killed between now and then. The black wolf nods and leaves the house. With full with vulgar gone, I'm faced again with the dreaded feeling of loneliness. No, not loneliness, but being alone. For whatever reason, I feel almost under siege when there's no one around me. I need to occupy myself, and with the growing fear inside my chest, I have to do it now. I quickly glance at the cupboard, remembering that Vol mentioned Rannick did some research on my kind. Considering my morning conversation with the Grey Wolf, it might be a good idea to try and find out more about my people. At least, it'll be something to do. I approach the cupboard and pick up the topmost volume. It's bound in gilded red in gilded red leather with a large golden plate donning its cover. The emblem is diamond-shaped and has a stylized paw print pressed into it. It looks awfully expensive, that's for sure. Six tribes of Ternan. As I flip through the pages, it seems to be some sort of a chronicle. There are different names written into it, supported by dates and details relating to them. It's a long and boring roll call of people long dead, going by the way the page is aged. Nope. This one's of no use to me, especially without context. I mean, there might be some human names there, but then again, how would I know? Also, the paw print on the cover tells me it's rather unlikely. I place the book down and pick up a blue tome which lied beneath it. It's much larger, even though more humbly decorated. The Great Tiger Rebellion. Hmm, another history book, and this one obviously not about humans. I wonder why Rannick has it. Surely it didn't aid him in his research. I'm about to put it down when I realize these wolves kept bringing tigers up an awful lot. Might be worth giving it a quick read. I sit myself down comfortably, browsing through the book. It's a hefty volume, and I don't feel like reading it whole. Not to mention, by the looks of the sun in the sky, there's little daylight left anyway. I skim the pages as briefly as I can, each of them filled with dates and names that mean nothing to me and which are gone from my mind the moment I read them. However, on the whole, it seems to be a detailed account of an ancient war spanning a century or so, which started as the title suggested by the Tigri ra raising in a rebellion against the Old Kingdom. Seems that long ago, Avalon used to be ruled by lions, who at least according to this book were monstrous tyrants. At first the Tigri fought alone, but over the years their bravery attracted other kin to join their struggle. Decade by decade their alliance grew until at the very end the Old Kingdom was no more and the Lion King had to abdicate. It's so surreal to read about other beastmen. This really is a living, breathing world with its own history and customs. How can I feel so misplaced here? I sigh in frustration, burrowing myself into the book. 
It's not a pleasant read, and in fact, most of the information is lost on me, but at least it passes the time. Hmm. Oh, wow, it really passed the time. Eventually, I placed the book down, utterly confused by the contents. None of this rings any bells. However, from the licks of things, the tigers don't seem to be as bad as the wolves paint them to be. Even more odd is the fact the wolves do not feature in this book. I quickly glance over the pages again, trying to find any mention of them, but it's almost as if they didn't exist. Before I can expand on my research, I hear a knock on the door. It must be Verissa. I close the book with a slight relief, returning it back to the cupboard. Not only was the read very dull, but in this dimly lit room it was outright laborsome on my eyes. I barely noticed how dark it got. Orion, you there? I approach the door without a word, remembering Vul's warning. I pull on the latch, releasing the lock and to allow, to allow Verissa to enter. The female rushes into the room and I quickly close the door behind her. You're uncharacteristically quiet. Good. She nods in satisfaction. But don't worry, I wasn't followed. The feast starts soon, so very few would waste their time here. What about Tano? My, my. It can be taught. She smiles with genuine pride on her muzzle. He's busy. I made sure of it. He won't have time to sniff about. I watch as she walks over to the shelf and retrieves a small plate. Only now do I notice she has a small sash at her waist, from which she takes a small vial and some fresh bandages. Why are you sitting in the dark? I... Do I really want to admit I have no idea how to start a fire without burning this house to the ground? She's been questioning my age an awful lot. I don't want to come across as utterly clueless as well. I prefer it this way. Less conspicuous. Right. I can see this wasn't exactly a convincing answer. Well, have it your way. She kneels down, slowly undoing my red and dressing. I watch as strip after strip is removed, revealing my blood-crusted side. There's a large scab covering the cut itself, but otherwise everything looks fine. How do you find your current living arrangements? She asks absentmindedly while inspecting my entire side. What do you mean? Do you like it here with Rannick? Um, I guess. It's a simple yes or no question, Orion. The female mutters, giving me a telling look. Yes, sorry, I'm happy here. Hmm. Again, she sounds unconvinced. Why do you ask? I ask because the elders prefer to house you in the stockades. The stockades? Our prison. And at first I was inclined to agree on the count of your... She cuts off diplomatically, obviously trying to find a proper word. I decide to spare her the trouble. Fuck up. Quite so. She smiles softly, placing a small cloth onto the plate and pouring the content of the vial into it, over it. The tincture has a slightly purple color and immediately soaks into the material. Heh. <laughs> that got Rannick fired up like little ever does. He insisted you became his ward instead. A peculiar choice, but he's the heir apparent. It was hard for the elders to say no, especially since he was ready to tear anyone to shreds over the issue. Myself included. My eyes widened in shock and she chuckles, catching my surprise. Figuratively speaking, of course, at least in my case. Heh. <laughs> Either way, to soften that spectacle, and to make his claim on you somewhat less obvious, I offer to take you under my wing instead. She shrugs, giving my wound a slight push and I wince in discomfort. Sharp or dull pain? Dull, but only when you press too hard. Curious. Her muzzle twists in a frown as she looks intently at my scar. You wanted me to live with you? Well, it's more complicated than that. But yeah, should you ever want to change your accommodations, all you need to do is let me know. It might take a while to settle, but... No! I bored out, almost in panic, catching her attention, but she doesn't say anything. I'm really happy here. Rennick takes good care of me. Indeed. The female narrows her eyes ever so slightly, but enough for me to register that little shift. Although, thank you for letting me know. I'll, I'll keep it in mind. She begins to wipe my side, cleaning it of all the dried blood, and I feel slight tingling, followed by stinging. I wince in discomfort again, but she pays me no mind, her brow still narrowed in focus. Technically, you're under house arrest as much as it doesn't sit well with me, as it doesn't sit well with Rannick. I'd rather go more subtly about it. I just want you to know that you have a choice, as limited as it is. Thank you, Verissa. That means a lot. Once the entire side is clean, she pokes slightly at the scab. Does it hurt? I shake my head. Good. 
She continues to wipe the scab, washing away much of the dried blood and reducing it in size until she reveals the fresh wound beneath. She then pours the remaining contents of the vial directly over it, causing me to seize up in pain. It's okay. It's okay. Don't touch it. She says softly, grabbing the clean dressing and covering the cut. So, you guys getting along okay? Does that surprise you? A little bit. Why? Call it female intuition and personal experience. Rennet can be a little much at times. Heh, <laughs> yeah. I try to chuckle, ignoring the pain radiating through my entire left side, but I still come across as slightly unnerved. Hmm, seems like I'm onto something. I didn't become a shaman for nothing, you know. She begins, unra she begins wrapping my side with clean strips of bandages, making sure that the new dressing sits nice and tight on my skin. I watch as she works her paws around me in silence, but eventually she forces me to speak up. Well then, you're going to tell me? It's nothing, really. I just struggle with reading that wolf. He's very forward, not that I mind, but it just takes me by surprise half the time. She pauses her task and looks at me with slight surprise. Quickly, quickly, however, that surprise is replaced with a knowing smile and she returns to bandaging me up. That's Rannick, all right. I swear that wolf never stopped being a pup. He was playful and teasing ever since we were little. Not to mention he's a massive flirt. I almost choke on that remark. Sometimes I think he doesn't even realize it. It used to drive me insane, but then I understood it's just how he is. At the end of the day, he's a flatterer. He loves to flatter others just as much as he likes to flatter himself. Yeah, sounds about right. I nod awkwardly. Don't let that fluster you. That's what he's after. If you ignore his teasing, he'll quickly get bored and move on to other jokes. As a last resort, you can just slap his ears. Moon knows. It's long overdue. Problem is, I don't think I want him to move on to the other jokes, nor I really think those are just jokes. Perhaps it's just his way of coping with this extremely oppressive society. That, or I'm again reading into things as is typical of me. It's nice to recognize some behavioral patterns among all this bl blankness. It's almost as if I'm meeting myself as a completely new person. There! All done. She smiles, admiring her handiwork and patting my side. Thank you. I look down, glad to be rid of that bloodied horror show. You're welcome. This was very fortuitous, you know. She mutters, collecting the reddish stripes the reddish stripes from the floor. What was? You started bleeding almost as if on cue. Made the whole scene so much more believable. Well, I wasn't acting. He did wolf-handle me a bit. <laughs> The female laughs at my poor joke. Yes, but still, seems the ancestors really look after us in our little gambit. Which is a good omen, for sure, as we need all the help we can get to see this through. Thus, I'll be burning those at the altar as well. She wiggles my old bundled bandages. That's the key to my protection here, right? Sort of. They're an offering to our ancestors. It's done when one of us is gravely wounded as a sort of intercession. One of you. I emphasized to let her know that distinction wasn't lost on me. Drastic times call for drastic measures. Either way, only a shaman can do this, and only a shaman can determine if the offering was accepted. So here we are. Was it, though? Accepted, I mean. She looks at me a bit shocked that I would ask such a question. Her troubled expression leaves me feeling slightly queasy, making the answer all the more obvious. Nobody knows what the future holds, Orion. Only time will tell. But for now, everything turned out all right. I give her a slight smile, nodding softly towards my patched up side. Well, as all right as it possibly could, all things considered. She chuckles, and I watch as she slowly packs up her things. I follow her with my gaze as she returns the plate to the shelf, feeling a void growing in my chest. The same nagging feeling of desperation fills my heart, and I know another panic attack fast approaches. She's about to leave, and I really don't want her to. But before I manage to say anything, she gives me a worried look. What's the matter? Why is your heart racing? Fuck! I keep forgetting about their creepy ability. However, in this instance, it saves me begging another person to keep me company. I'm fine. Sorry. Just slightly anxious. Well, it's to be expected in your situation. It wasn't an exactly peaceful experience for you these past few days. She pulls up a chair and sits down at the table, looking at me with a soft smile. I can stay with you for a bit. Not long, though. I'm needed at the feast. It'd be a great insult if I left the chief hanging at the dinner table. Is Rannick going to be there? I ask, worried he'll, he'll be held up longer than I would like. 
Last time he returned quite late. No. She smiles, again giving me this unnerving, knowing look. He was pretty adamant he will come straight to his home after his patrol. Oh, he, he shouldn't have. No, he shouldn't. The female agrees with a, with a quite serious tone. However, she quickly chuckles it off. But I long realize that this wolf will do as he pleases, no matter what. She locks, her, she locks her gaze with the clay bottle at the table and gently pushes at it, letting it wobble in place for a moment. I see Vol took advantage of your hospitality. Not as much as I would like. I laugh. I thought we were bonding. He almost told me about the moon, th about the moon brother thing when he suddenly bolted. All right, guys, I'm going to save it right there. Thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode of Far Beyond the World. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!